It's June 1998, and France is hosting the biggest sporting event in its history. With the largest number of participating countries ever in a World Cup, France is ready for the biggest party in football. But behind the footballing glamour, France was hiding a darker reality. As the most racially troubled country in Europe, France was divided by the question of immigration. Jean-Marie Le Pen, the leader of the far-right National Front, openly attacked the multiracial makeup of the French national team. I just think it was cheap talk, you know. France always have been great to welcome people in, always. As long as we were wearing the French shirt, you know, it didn't matter where you're coming from. And Everyone was proud to be French. But what Le Pen was choosing to ignore was that French football had always reflected the country's racial diversity. Many of France's greatest ever players had come from immigrant backgrounds. Players like Raymond Copa and Michel Platini. But even their exuberant talents had not brought football in glory to France. The French team was a delight to watch, was a team that played beautifully and entertained the crowd. But there's always been a conflict in French football culture, that, you know, should we win or should we go out and play brilliantly? In the 68-year history of the World Cup, the French had never reached the final. An embarrassment for the country that had invented the competition in the first place. But over the course of 33 days in the summer of 1998, the French team are determined to shake off their image as perennial losers. And at the same time, change the nation's understanding of itself and its relationship with its people. And racially unite a divided country. France's hopes for the 1998 World Cup were pinned on the mercurial midfielder Zinedine Zidane. Zidane was, for me, the player of exception. Zidane was out of the ordinary, exceptional, but he didn't have his influence yet. He hadn't yet got his personal aura. He played football to enjoy himself. He had exceptional skills, though he wasn't much of a team player. But when he came into the French squad, he joined other talents who took him onto an international level. What he can do with his feet, you know, some people even can't even do it with their hands. You know, it's just magical. You know, sometimes when he plays with the ball, you, it seems like he's dancing. Zidane magic was evident from an early age when he could be seen playing outside his high-rise flat in his hometown of Marseille. We had real fun playing our own World Cup on the Place de la Tartan in the estate where I was brought up, La Castellan. We each had our own team, but uh, at that age you don't think it's going to be a reality. But reality for Zidane, a second generation Algerian immigrant, gave him little scope for dreaming. His estate, La Castellan, was notorious as a no-go area. With high unemployment, limited educational opportunities, and a lack of services, it was known as un quartier difficile, a problem area. And its problems were blamed on its immigrant population. France had a real problem concerning immigration and the integration of immigrant communities into French society. There was a lot of violence. 
whether it be in rundown estates or posh areas, but the problem was always presented as immigrants. The media suggested that it was coloured people who were causing the country all these problems. It was not just the media who fueled French discontent. The nationalist politician Jean-Marie Le Pen actually used Jacquet's multiracial team to further inflame the immigration issue. I think Jean-Marie Le Pen, who's a, who's a supreme opportunist, took the right moment to have a, a kick at the French team as representative of everything that was decadent and rotten about France in the 1990s. Le Pen claimed it was a sham to call this group of foreigners French. I think that that remark was out of place. All the players who were there didn't ask themselves questions about their origins. They were proud to represent France, and they made every effort so that France could win, regardless of whether they were black or white. Jacquet's squad was no different to the great French teams of the past. France has always had multicultural national teams. Zinedine Zidane may have been a second-generation Algerian immigrant, but the player he was often compared to was also an immigrant and one of the greatest French players of all time, Raymond Copa. I've always considered myself to be French, despite my Polish roots. If I had taken Polish nationality, I wouldn't have been able to be a part of this country. I would have remained a foreigner. Whereas I played a very important role within the country, because I was quickly adopted as the French number one. Copa grew up in a mining town in the north of France and, like Zidane, 40 years later, escaped the limited prospects of his background by playing football. By the time of the 1958 World Cup in Sweden, Copa had become a famous international footballer. Raymond Copa was an exceptional player for his time. You could pass him the ball knowing he wouldn't lose it. He could dribble and keep the ball and make decisive passes. He was the best player in the world at the time. Copa was joined in Sweden by a group of fellow immigrant players. The French team was a multiracial team. There was Raymond Copa, who, who was Polish in origin. There was Piantoni, who was Italian in origin. And, and there was just Fontaine, who was from Marrakesh of Spanish and Italian origins. Although the team were playing in the greatest football competition in the world, there was little interest in them from either the French public or the French press. In the beginning, during training, there were only three journalists, one from L'Equipe, one from France Football and one from Francois. And they would eat with us and train with us because everyone thought that we would be going straight home after the first three matches. But Raymond Copa and the team were determined to prove they could do much better than that. With Copa passing to Juste Fontaine in the number 17 shirt, the French tear Paraguay apart in the first of their group games. I suppose we worked so well because he was able to read exactly what I planned to do. And I was always glad to find him up front. After winning 7-3 against Paraguay, the Copa Fontaine partnership provided the few French journalists with stories that hit the headlines back in France as they cruised through their group matches. And France's flamboyant play attracted the description champagne football. As a style, it reflected the philosophy of team manager Albert Bateau. Bateau, as a manager, was a great believer in style, and charisma and, and it's an open question whether to some extent he was really that concerned with winning because what he prized above all was, was a team that played beautifully played extravagantly and, and entertained the crowds and of course this went down well with the crowds there's no reason why it shouldn't France took the 1958 tournament by storm reaching the semi-finals for the first time in their history but there 
they had to face their most formidable opponents to date.